Oh. Yep, that is my reaction that I felt when I had to sit through the entire hour of his very first film that was ever made back in 2010. <laughs> And I've seen plenty of movies back then, too. And not only that, though, I had to sit through all three of his films. All three of them. And I just wasted my entire brain cells for three hours. Over three hours. Boy, how much life sucks these days. I guess it all started back in May 1st, 2008. Which happens to be before my 23rd birthday. <laughs> Just kill me now. Uh, Lucas Krenschenk had came up with a character. He has a six-year-old personality that's trapped inside a 15-year-old teenage body. And he basically has an irritating, annoying, high-pitched chickmunk voice of his that's enough to become, become even more popular than ever before. And the sad part is... A lot of people find his humor, you know, hilarious and funny. That everybody's decided to watch his videos all the time, until it, it got picked up by Nickelodeon. Out of all people, <laughs> yeah, thanks to executive producer Brian Robbins, who happens to be the creator behind all that, Keenan Kale, The Amanda Show, and and many others that he has in his resume. I mean, that and that sucks even for him because. I always enjoy half of his stuff that he has been doing during those times because he's been best known as a cast member from the TV show Head of the Class with Dan Schreiner and Dan Friskman you know, who went on to do all these other TV shows and movies. Yeah, because I always love all that in Keen and Kel as well as The Amanda Show, Good Burger, the movie Varsity Blues. Yeah. That was his best work, in my opinion. And what happened, though, was that he has taken a downward spiral by making all these crappy Eddie Murphy movies that were not so good at, at all, and had to subject to this piece of shit that even makes it even much worse than it already is. Along with Dan Schreiner with um, all the other Nickelodeon shows that we had, like iCarly and Drake and Joss and so on. Yeah, so many others that <laughs> follow. So we have to be stuck with this asshole. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this, I don't even like his sense of humor, his character that he's been coming up with, with all of his stupid uh, prophetic look on his face, with that screeching voice, everything that he does, because he does on a regular basis, just goes out, have fun, do whatever he wants. He talks about all of his life and all this other stuff about what he does. Just makes my skin crawl. Within minutes. Um, I, I did look at his videos too. And, it, and they're not... <laughs> they're not fun. And I didn't even laugh once on every single one of them. But when I heard that he was going to get his own movie back in 2010, that's where my heart sank. Is it amazing that that all this time, when I lost, ever since I lost my my first YouTube channel, I had to look at some of his other videos and all this other garbage. Yeah, prior to this, until I had to find someone that are even more funnier and more talented than these assholes. And it's also sad that they get all the credit they deserve, and not all the other guys who who always want to have their lifelong dreams to be in the movie as well as a TV show. And that's what we get. We get Lucas Crankshank having his own popularity by having his own TV show and movies. And even has his other show that's on Nickelodeon already. It's just ridiculous. Well, <laughs> let's get right back to it because I think I'm going to waste my time reviewing this. And that's the main reason why I'm doing this in the first place. So here it goes. The movie stars Lucas Crankshank. With Pixie Lot, yeah, from yeah, a UK pop sensation artist, along with John Cena from the WWE Wrestling, 
Yeah, I, I, it's hard to believe that yeah, he gets to be part of this. With Slowpan Fallen, who went on to do the TV show Seinfeld, yes, we should play that girl who happens to be Elaine's friend. She went on to do that film called Men in Black and many others that she's been following. Also, Jeanette McCurdy from the TV show iCarly, who's now recently in the TV show Sam and Cat, with Jake Wary. Stephanie Courtney, who's been best known as Flo in the commercials and for Progressive Insurance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's hard to believe she plays Kevin's mother in this one. Along with Oscar Nunez, Jordan Black, and Gary Anthony Williams. It's written, of course, by Louis Quinshank. Yeah, he's the co-writer for this, because he created this character. With David A. Goodman and Clay Weiner. <laughs> Clay Weiner. Oh, wow. Not Mark Weiner, though. But... Well, it's a tough movie that I had to sift through, but here it goes. The movie begins inside his place, a 15-year-old, hyperactive and annoying, irritating Fred Finkelhorn who wears his childish dungarees and green striped t-shirt who's played by Lucas Crankshank that basically talks about what he does best like he always does on the internet. He's trying to be a cool guy and a great singer. Yeah, right. And does what he does best for his life activities by like making his own cheese fries and, and talk about all of this other stuff and of course he he always does all these mistakes of his, of his own. Does all these crazy antics, and yes, he even comes up with his own, you know, curse word. Because he can't say the D word. Yeah, I know. Damn it. Stupid. He, he lives with his own mother and father. His mother is basically stone face, like she's drunk and, and she can't deal with him for <laughs> for a second. I know. I, now I know how she feels. Yeah, she's played by Slop Hand Fallen. His father, on the other hand, is John Cena. Yep, basically John Cena, just doing what he does best. Gives him advice about what he needs to do in order to do what he does. Yeah, <laughs> it's a family. Well, apparently Fred actually has a love interest with a girl next door named Judy, who's played by Pixie Locked. And unfortunately, he's being devastated to see her perform a romantic duet with his arch nemesis, Kevin, during music class. He's played by Jake Wery. So prior to this, though, Fred has assumed that someday he'll be able to sing his own duet with Judy. So then things will be even much better for him. But that gets even much worse when Fred discovers that she's going to be moving with her family to another place outside of town so that means you know he's going to be even more upset and and more furious than now not to mention sad that and depressed that he's going to be running around screaming on the top of his lungs creating all these annoying tantrums of his yeah it's it, it's just embarrassing to sit through well also fred has a friend next door named bertha who's played by jeanette mccurry of course, was jumping on the trampoline. Yeah, always gives you know always gets Fred's advice and all his other stuff. And he's also a best friend. You don't see her very often in the movie, though. Sadly, yeah, that's a sad because yeah, Burford is the only good fiend that's in the movie, and as opposed to Pixie a lot. Yeah, because I mean, once in a while she does pop up, you know, and she's of course a brunette, so you probably don't know. During while Fred is just doing his own journey, Fred decided to encounter so many characters, including an anthropomorphic deer, the draggled childhood friend who got lost in the forest earlier, named Little Evan Weiss. Oh, you wouldn't believe this. And so many others. E even a kid named Durf, who's basically an opposite of Fred. <laughs> yeah. So. All this time, he had to go cross country trying to look for the perfect gift you know, for Judy. Uh, also, the fact that it's her birthday. So he went on to he went to a pet store, actually stolen a dog, 
went on to do a lot of crazy stuff and and also <laughs> was almost about to get in trouble yeah almost got arrested uh, after all these antics that he's been doing all the way until he finally arrived at Judy's home after all this time yeah and that's where everything went completely downhill even for that because once once that Fred discovers that he's that she's hosting a party he was not invited so Fred has been bullied by her guest for his social social standings at school and his eccentric personality which is even worse because Kevin decided to shove a pizza onto Fred's shirt which causes him to vomit on Judy's party dress which was an accident yeah feeling very miserable Fred decided to leave the house and only to find out that Kevin actually had posted a video of him vomiting Judy on YouTube yes on YouTube all right so attempting to get his revenge Fred decided to throw his own party with Bertha so that means this will be the kind of video that will, will please everybody that he would actually enjoy his video even more than what he, he saw that Kevin posted on there yep, which basically all you see is he just decided to come up with his own fake party yeah a big song were all edited together <laughs> and of course he even vomited along with Bertha and all the rest yeah it's just it was too much it's like watching a bad music video so the very next day Judy actually visited Fred's house and asked if the two may sing together and surprisingly enough Fred accepts the request so everything went back to normal as it seems well it didn't work for me at all and I didn't find anything particularly funny throughout the entire movie I didn't even laugh once not once why did I have to waste my time with this movie because I didn't have nothing else to do but I had to sit for this because I wanted to see how bad this movie really is and it really was bad I couldn't believe it myself why would you have to spend the whole day going cross country just look for the place that she's about to move in only to find out that she only lives a couple blocks from where he was doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever and, and what does he do? He, he always he's basically doing what he does best. He goes around meeting another stranger no matter what uh, <laughs> uh, no matter what race they are you know and it, it's really embarrassing even they hated his guts um, it's even more embarrassing to see a Chinese family that's living inside what used to be Judy's house and he mistakenly referred to them as spies that's really insulting and of course we do get to see him being buried in, inside the sand <laughs> at the beach you know, you know where he was hanging out with Bertha for a while you know, and so on and so forth and, you know I had to sit for 82 minutes of my entire life but I only saw this once on Nickelodeon for two hours straight with commercials you know, but didn't matter to me. It, it was one of the worst movies of 2010, and I've seen plenty of bad movies that year. Yes, I have. <laughs> no doubt in question. But this one is just my number one worst movie of the year. If I had to bold it, so many bad movies out there, this is the one. Yeah. I couldn't even believe that he actually made the other two films that followed this and no doubt in question this is even worse I've seen the Garbage Pill Kids movie I've seen Geely I've seen Pure Harbor I saw a lot of bad movies in my time but this one tops it all well and there's even more movies that followed that but, yeah. well <laughs> That sums it up. And it's funny. There were a lot of great actors in this movie that I think they would deserve way better than this. And it's also sad too because this movie actually came out in the UK theatrically because they had a pop star named Pixie Lott 
I, I did saw her music videos, uh, so to speak. I think she's actually pretty cute. And, and I gotta admit, she is pretty hot sometimes. <laughs> well, that's just me. It's sad that she got participated in this mess, and so was Jeanette McCurdy. And, and it's also sad because you don't see that much screen time for her, too. Yeah, she didn't have plenty of screen time in this film whatsoever because she was probably the only good thing in the movie. As well as uh, John Cena, and I'll, I'll give John Cena credit for that. He was okay. Other than that, though, this movie just sucks. It completely sucks. It's a waste of time. I don't know why people even bother watching this. I couldn't believe I had to sit through this. You know, he's just not funny. Let's face it, guys. Fred Finkelhorn sucks. And he always will, and no matter what he does. But as for Lucas Crenshank, on the other hand, though, outside of that stupid character of his, I think he does have talent. I mean, I heard he had done something different prior to that stupid character. I mean, yeah, because I know he already has a TV show on Nickelodeon already. Yeah. But he also had another TV show called Marvin Marvin. Um, I don't know. I, I never watched that show, but I don't even know if it's any good or not. I, I doubt it. <laughs> well, maybe someday in, in, the, in the future he'll probably come up with something better. But I'm not going to attack him because, you know... You know, he, he might be talented or something, but otherwise, who cares? I just don't like the show. I don't even like the movie. And I have to waste my time sitting through it. It's just really bad. I'm sorry, but I can't stand having to look at his annoying personality of his. I can take Jim Carrey and all these other guys that I love. This guy cannot cut it. He just can't do anything that's funny anymore. And that's what I felt. That I had to be annoyed by this. So anyway, I give Fred the movie the legendary zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, but I'll see you later, much later. Bye. And Fred Finkelhorn, you really suck.